It drives me nuts every time I see these ideas that New Jersey is such a corrupt state and this is the way politics has to be. It doesn't have to be. It wasn't under Brendan Byrne. It wasn't under Tom Kane. It wasn't under me. Uh, we ran an ethical administration, an honest administration, and we made a lot of a lot of changes for the good of the public in general. Well, I would hope it would be of one who, you know, always did their best for the greatest number of people. Do I want the legacy to be the million acres of open space? That's good. I appreciate that. But I also like would like people to remember we put in core curriculum standards. We hadn't had that in the state before. I mean, our offices in New York were two blocks from, from ground zero. And when the planes hit, we had people in the office who were actually looking out the window, had relatives live, who were working in the buildings that were in building one and building two. And it was a terribly emotional time. We evacuated immediately and they came over to New Jersey. And within hours, they were back in the city with monitors, taking monitoring air quality. The misconception, I think, the really the harsh one that bothers me the most is this belief that somehow there was some reason to withhold information from people and that that was what was happening and it was a political decision. Every statement that EPA released, everything that I said was based on what the, sci the scientific analysis at that time was telling us. There was a real difference in quality of air on the site, on the pile, where there were constant fires going and they were removing debris and you'd get, um, you'd get a release and in ambient air quality in lower Manhattan in general. And the air quality in general was okay, but the air quality on the pile was always, always problematic. And we were saying that all the time, but we didn't have the legal authority to enforce the use of respirators. The real challenge was that people assumed that EPA was in charge of what happened there, and we weren't. There was a lot of hope, a lot of excitement. I think a lot of people are, are willing to say to me, oh, it's terrible. Nothing good happened. All he did was trash the environment. Um, I think that's, again, that's, that's simplistic, and it's not being realistic. I mean, President Bush had come in on a campaign of bringing people together, and he'd done that in, in Texas. So there was a great hope that we'd get away from some of the partisan gridlock that we had up until that point. And there was a lot of hope for the environment. Certainly I had that. If you go down the list, there are actually quite a few things that even environmentalists will admit, albeit grudgingly, are, were good. Now that, of course, is in the face of all the allegations about the misuse of science and, a, and the big issue. The thing that really has, has framed, I think, most people's perception of the administration on the environment is the unwillingness to recognize climate change as being a significant issue and the unwillingness to regulate carbon. President Bush, during as governor, had put a cap on carbon, as I mentioned, and he had campaigned on that. So when I was getting ready to go to my first G8 meeting in Trieste, I went to the White House, I went to all the channels and said, look, I'm going to tell them, because those were all the Europeans and the other major countries, and they'd all supported Kyoto, that we're not going to sign Kyoto, but that the president believes in a cap on carbon, and he's going to move toward that. Of course, while I was there, right before I left, actually, there started to be a, a drumbeat from some that I was trying to undercut the president and back him into the Kyoto Protocol, which, which wasn't the case. And when I got back, um, I got called over to the White House pretty quickly and told that not only were we not endorsing Kyoto, which I knew, but that the president was go not going to put any kind of a cap on carbon. It was uh, a decision that was made without much input from me or from EPA, and it, it was pretty uncomfortable. He was an enormously influential uh, player in environment and energy issues. No question about it. Those were kind of his areas and was able to, to influence the president. It was a, an interesting phenomenon. If I'd go in and talk to the president, we'd be on the same page. We'd agree. He'd understand the issues. I never had the person that I've read about where people say, oh, he wasn't engaged in the issues and he didn't understand them. Whenever I went into them with them and in into him with an issue, he was on top of it. He was well briefed. He asked him questions and we ended up on the same page. And then I'd leave and the vice president would come in and things would change. I am the last Republican to have carried the state of New Jersey. Not since 1997 has a Republican carried the state for the Senate or for the presidency or much less the governorship. And, and that just shouldn't be. We are better off when we have a viable two-party system that's very competitive. So I don't see running for office again. I can't imagine that. But you never say never because nobody believes you anyway. So why say it?